In this video, we're going to be solving two-step word problems for fourth grade math utilizing multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So in this first word problem, we want to look for words that are going to tell us what we're going to do. So we see that word per and that word equally, and both of them actually mean we're going to be doing division. So reading the question, it says the bakery packs six muffins per box. They baked a total of 72 muffins and split the boxes equally between three shelves. So first thing we need to do is figure out how many boxes there are going to be by taking a look at the muffins, 72 muffins, with six muffins per box. If we divide that, we're actually going to get an answer of 12 boxes. Now we need to figure out how many of those boxes are going to be equally split among three shelves. Since we have 12 boxes in total, we're going to divide that by three for each one of the shelves, and that's going to give us an answer of four. So we're going to see that we have four boxes per shelf, which is going to be our answer. So we can look at the question, the very last sentence, to figure out what we're trying to do, which is going to tell us where we're going to be looking for how many markers there are in total. By reading the question, we can look at this word each, which is going to tell us that we're going to be multiplying some values together. And if we continue to read, we see this word more, and this word usually means that we're going to be adding. If we read the question, it says each student brings three markers to class. The teacher collects the markers from five students, then finds seven more markers in a drawer. So what we're going to do first is take this three markers, and we're going to multiply it by five students. If we multiply that out, we're going to get a total of 15 markers. It then says again we're going to add these two values together, so we can take 15 and we can add 7 to it. Whenever we add values in this fashion, we're going to start with the column on the right. So 5 plus 7 will give us a total of 12. We put the 2 down here and then we carry the 1 to the top in the next column. So now we're going to add again vertically 1 plus 1 will be equal to 2. So our answer is going to be a total of 22 markers. So we'll start by looking at what the question is overall asking, and that's how many students have cookies. Well, we can't really tell at this point if it's going to be addition or subtraction, but as we read the word problem, it should become clear. So as we read it, we're going to see this word equally, which is going to mean division. And as we look further into the question, it also talks about division as well, so we know that's going to be the first step. It then says two students drop their cookies, which is going to tell us that we're going to be doing subtraction. So we can cross out that addition, and we know the second step will be subtraction. Reading the question, it says there are 56 students and 8 cookies. They're going to be equally shared between students. After the cookies are divided, two students drop their cookies. So what we're going to do first is take a look at that 56 for how many cookies there are, and they're going to be divided equally between 8 cookies per student, which tells us that we're going to have a total of 7 students. Now it says as the cookies are divided, two students drop their cookies. So we're going to go 7 minus 2, which then tells us that five students have cookies, and that's going to be our answer. Moving on to the next problem, the question is asking how many marbles does he have left? Well, that word left is going to tell us that we have subtraction. As we read this question, it says that we have 100 marbles, and that Eli gives three marbles to each of his four cousins. Now this word each is actually going to be used as multiplication, and so we can see that we're going to be multiplying this first, and then subtracting the total amount of marbles, which is 100. So we know that 3 times 4 will tell us how many marbles he's going to give in total to his cousins, which is going to be a total of 12 marbles. With that information, now we can do subtraction to figure out how many marbles Eli has left. So we'll do 100 and minus 12. When we do this, we're going to use borrowing to figure out how to go from 0 minus 2, because again, we always subtract by starting with the right column and moving left. So we have a 1 here, so we're going to borrow that 1 to this 0. So if we do that, this is going to turn to 0, and this is going to turn to 10. Because we take a value from in, in front, we put it here. Well, I still can't subtract 0 minus 2. That first number always needs to be bigger than what you're subtracting by at the bottom. So we're going to borrow again. 10 minus 1 is going to be 9. And we borrow that 1 that we took from the 10, and we put it in front of the 0 here. So now we have 10 minus 2, which is going to give us an answer of 8. 
Then we have 9 minus 1, which is going to give us another answer of 8. So in total, Eli is going to have 88 marbles left. So again, looking at the answer, it's asking how many cupcakes are there in total? This word total is going to give it away that we're going to be adding for one step. Reading this question, we see this word each, which we know is going to be multiplication. And then it says that we are going to be then adding, again, that 12 more cupcakes to the platter. We can also see this word more, which always tells us that we're going to be adding. Reading the question, it says each tray holds 8 cupcakes, and a baker fills 6 trays, and then he adds 12 more cupcakes to the platter. So we know, again, we're going to be multiplying these first two numbers of 8 cupcakes with 12 trays. If we multiply that, we're going to get a total of 48. It then says we add 12 more cupcakes to the platter. So adding this, we're going to start with the right column to add. 8 plus 2 is going to be 10. We put the 0 down here. We carry that 1 to the top of the next column. And then we're going to add these three numbers up. 1 plus 4 is going to be 5, plus another 1 will give us 6. So our answer is going to be 60 cupcakes in total. So again, we take a look at what the question is asking, and it says how many chairs are left? That word left is going to tell us that we're going to be doing subtraction at some point during the word problem. Looking at the question, we're going to see we have the word each, which again usually means multiplication. And then as we read, it says after the school of event, seven chairs are broken and removed. That word removed is going to tell us that we're going to be doing subtraction. So reading the word problem, there are five rows of chairs with six chairs in each row. After a school event, seven chairs are broken and removed. So going from the first sentence, it says that we have five rows of chairs with six chairs in each row. We're going to multiply that out to get 30. And then it says we're going to have those seven chairs are going to be removed. So we're going to subtract that from our answer. When we do this, we're going to be borrowing this 3 to subtract 0 minus 7. So we're going to borrow a value from here, so we take 2. We have one value left, we're going to put that in front. So now we have 10 minus 7, which is going to give us an answer of 3. We have 2, and minus the value of nothing, we can put a 0 here. So 2 minus 0 is going to give us the 2. So we're going to have 23 good chairs left. Looking at the next problem, our question is asking how many people are left on each team? Well, when we see it in this question, it could mean multiply, and it could also mean divide. So hopefully as we read the question, we'll figure out what we need to do. So it says that there's space for 120 people, and there are already 48 people inside. The rest of the people are divided equally among six teams. So the, we know we're going to be dividing, so we can cross out that multiplication, and we have divide. Now for the first part of the question, we're actually going to be subtracting. And it's 120 minus 48. So for us to subtract this, again, we always start with the right column first. And we need to borrow from this 2. So we're going to borrow one value from 2. So this is going to change this to a 1. And then we put this 10 out in front. 10 minus 8 is going to give us 2. And then we have 1 minus 4. Well, we can't subtract this because the top value is smaller than what's on the bottom. So we're going to borrow from this 1 right here. So that's going to be 0. We put a 1 in front. Now we have 11 minus 4, which is going to give us 7. So we have a total of 72 people, and those are going to be divided equally among 6 teams. So 72 divided by 6 is going to give us an answer of 12, and that's how many people we'll have on each team. For the next word problem, it looks like we're going to be seeing how many crates do they sell in total. That word total is going to give away that we're going to be adding at some point. As we look through the question, we have this word equally, which we know is going to be division. And then it tells us that we're going to sell two more, which is going to be where our addition comes into play. As we read the question, it says that the fruit stand sells 76 apples packed equally with eight apples per crate. This word per, we can also use to see that it is going to be division. Then they sell two more crates individually. So we're going to start by looking at division. So we have 96, and we're going to divide it by 8. 96 divided by 8 is going to tell us that we have 12 crates in total. And then it looks like we're going to sell two more crates individually. Now when we see this word sell, you might think that it would be subtraction, but it's really about how many do we have in total. So addition and more is going to give it away that we're going to be adding. So we start again from the right. The 2 plus 2 will be 4. 
Then we have that one, we'll carry it down. So that our total is gonna be 14 crates that were sold in total.